Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a publication quality bar graph that contains individual data points here to show the spread of scores in each individual group. I have another video that I'll link into the description below that shows you how to get make all these changes uh, to an Excel graph to get a publication quality. And at the end of this video, I'll run through that so you can see uh, how to do that without having to watch that video. All right, first let me set up this example. So the example is pretty simple. Uh, I made up all of this data, none of it is real. It's just to show you and be a good example. But let's suppose that we had two classes where students are learning, one where they have a discussion and one where they just have a simple lecture. And then suppose that we have two ways we're testing our students in the classes. So we have a multiple choice exam, we have an essay exam, and you might get some results like this if we're looking at the mean number of correct items. And of course, each one of these little dots represents a person in our classroom. So that's the basic setup for this example. What I'm gonna do is um, move over to this other sheet so that we can create everything. So like I mentioned in the other uh, video that I, sh that I created, uh, you can create these graphs really easy if you set up your column columns in this way, whatever variable you want on the x-axis you list in columns, whatever variable you want represented by different bars, you're gonna put in rows. So that's why I've labeled it this way. I would put the labels in here. Then you can put your group means in here if you calculate them from your uh, favorite statistical package, you could just put them in here. And then of course we put the standard deviations that correspond to each of these four groups. So for example, uh, this is discussion multiple choice, so this would be the standard deviation up here for discussion multiple choice. Lecture multiple choice is down here, and so the standard deviation is down in the second cell, and so on. Uh, so that's the setup of this. Now out here, what you want to do is, this is the individual data. So if you have your individual data here, um, so here's the multiple choice discussion group, here's the multiple choice lecture group, here's the essay discussion group, and the essay lecture group, there's your data. Now you can also have Excel, and I did actually in this example, have Excel generate the average, you see the formula there, or the standard deviation from those rows of data. So you can do that too, uh, if you want to, or you can just sort of plug it in. The nice thing is if you change the data here, then it'll automatically change in your figure. Now you'll notice I have other columns of data. So I have an X value for this group. So I just wrote, uh, multiple choice discussion shorthand, the X value, um, and just plug in one to start with. And we'll play with this a little bit later. Multiple choice lecture, the X value, we're just gonna put in two, uh, and multiple choice, I'm sorry, essay discussion, you're gonna put in three, and essay lecture, you're gonna put in four for your starting value. Um, so that's all you need to get started and get set up. Okay, we're ready to get started. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna create our bar graph. So the simplest way to do this is just highlight the cells that you want to be in your bar graph. And we're gonna go up to insert and we're gonna select a 2D column. And as you can see there, I'm let me zoom out a little bit here to give us a little bit of room to work. We're gonna bring our column down here. Now we're gonna change a bunch of this stuff. I am gonna Go ahead and nuke out the title uh, and the grid lines just because it would give us a little bit more uh, space there. We'll clean up all the stuff at the end. Um, next thing to do is to create our error bars. So we're gonna select series and then we're gonna go into error bars and we're gonna select more options. I'm going through this pretty quick because I detailed this in a different video, of course. Um, so here's our error bar options. Where is it? Here we go. So um, I'm going to select just plus because it works better for a bar graph. Um, actually, let me show you real quick. So if you're going to do both, you go to custom, specify the value. What you need to do is here we have the series um, discussion. So what we're going to do is um, for both multiple choice and essay is we're going to select across for the error bars. And then we have to do it again for the negative error bar value to put that in and so those are going to be our error bars so that's how that works now i'm going to go back and make them just a plus because as you can see it added a negative value here we don't want that 
Uh, we don't need them for a bar graph anyway. But if you want your error bars going both directions, that's uh, something you need to pay attention to. So now we're going to select the, the other series, which is the lecture. And you can see Excel is even telling us this. And so we go into error bars for that too. Let's see if we can get over here. The navigation can sometimes be kind of a pain. So I'm just going to go back to error bars. Oh, that's because I haven't selected them yet. More options. Uh, and what we're going to do here for that is also plus. We'll go down to custom, specify the value, and we're going to highlight both values here. I'll go ahead and put the negative in just in case one day you want to come back and have double error bars, they'll actually be accurate, even though they won't be displayed. Okay, so we have our error bars and we have our uh, bar graph. So we're off and running. Uh, the next step is to actually add in the series data points for each individual score. All right, so how do we do that? Well. First thing we're going to do is we're going to click our graph. So select just the entire graph. And you're going to have, you may have to hunt for this, but if you look for chart tools up here, design, um, you're going to get an option to select the data. So that's what we want to do. We want to select the data and we're going to create a new series. So we're going to add a series. It doesn't matter what you call it. Now we're doing the data for this very first group. So I'm going to call it multiple choice and then a D for discussion. It really doesn't matter what you call it because it's not going to show up in your graph. We're going to delete this out. Now we're going to highlight the data for all of our first groups. So this is the individual data wherever you put that in your Excel spreadsheet for your first group. And we're going to click OK. We can click OK again. Now what it's done is it's just plotted each individual score for this first group. So that's why you see all these bars here. If we added a bunch more data, we'd get longer along the uh, X axis. So now the next step is we're going to turn this from a bar graph into a scatter plot. So you select the series, the new series, the data that you did, and you go up to change chart type. Now you're going to get this cool screen. So here we have clustered column. We want those. But for the MCD, we want it, that to be changed. We're going to change it to a scatter plot, right? And so the scatter plot, that's our first step to get us there. So uh, we're going to click OK here. Um, now what we have to do is go back to the series and select the data. And if you now click on it and edit it, you now see that because you changed it from, actually let me move it up so you can see it. So you changed it from a bar to a scatter. It now has retained the Y values, which was our data from the column. But now we need to put in our X values. And so this is where your X value comes in handy. You're going to highlight, actually, I can't really see that very well. Actually, I actually got them all. Okay, so you're going to put your X value in. Now you click OK, and then voila, you have all your individual uh, data points that are there. Now you'll notice that this is off a little bit, right? It's off center, and that's because the one is like actually right here in between these two bars. So this is why I said you're going to have to play around with this a little bit. So I think um, 0 0.86, let's see if that works. I think that pretty much puts us on uh, par there. So we'll, let's change it and we'll go down. We'll change it for all of them and we'll see. All right, so that lines up in the center. So you just find the value that lines up in the center. So basically we need to do the same thing for the other, uh, each individual group. So I'll do it once more and then uh, through the magic of editing, I'll spare you the third and the fourth time. We'll just sort of jump ahead and then I'll clean up the graph. Uh, but that's the hard part, getting that first part in. So now that we're going to do this, we're going to add another series. Uh, and it gets a little bit easier, actually, the, with the second time that you add the series. So we're going to uh, select the data. We're going to add. Now, in this case, it's our second group. So it's multiple choice uh, lecture is what it is. And, and now you see that it's actually saved and it has an X and a Y. So we can go ahead and we don't have to do that additional step, which is kind of nice. So we're going to do the X value. Now we're going to do the Y value for the multiple choice lecture. So you'll notice these dots are way over here. That's because our X value is at two. So what we want to do is we want to have it just a little beyond one. So we'll try, actually I'm going to cheat. What did I use over here? 1.143. So 1.143, uh, that should work. And then, We'll put that in. 
and that should put all of our data points where we basically want it. Uh, let's try 1.14 even. I'm just gonna have to eyeball it and make sure it looks right and you may have to change it a little bit later. Uh, make sure it lines up with your um, error bar there. Okay, so through the magic of editing, I'll go ahead and do these other two groups and spare you that. Okay, so you can see I got the other data series in there. Now, uh, what you need to do is go into your individual legend and um, you're going to actually may let me zoom in a little bit. You're going to select, be careful and just select the individual. It's not showing up on my screen very well, but you're going to select the individual series and delete them from your oops you're going to delete them from your legend be careful not to delete the entire legend as i just did there you go now it's getting even better this is the part so there's your graph uh now i'm going to go clean it up uh make it more publishable quality and do all of these things that you need to do to make it look nice so first thing is uh the axes are not black I hate this about Excel. So also going to do this. Make the make them black. Make the line black because the line is not black. There's no what well here. Let's change the color of the font as well. Over here, there's no black line. Um, oh yes. So we got to do solid line, solid black line for the y-axis. The y-axis also has no ticks, so while we're in here, um, I don't think I selected the axis here. Let's try this. There we go. Now, let's see. Tick marks. Uh, we're going to do cross to make them appear. Uh, so we're doing better there. All right, so let's change our dots. So our dots, we're going to make them, uh, you could either, actually, because of the, the way the bars are, uh, we're going to do solid fill but white. And then you want your border to be solid line and black. And you're going to do that for all of them. Or You're gonna have to edit that bit out so the fill is gonna be solid fill. And the border is a solid line that's black. There we go. Select that. You want marker, solid fill, but we want it white in the border solid line. Last one, we're gonna do the same thing. Border solid line, solid fill, white. Okay. So there we go. Okay, so we got that going on. All right, so now let's add, uh, actually, let me move the um, legend. So we're gonna select the legend. Uh, legend entry options. It's in here somewhere. We can change the position. Maybe it's up here. Uh, here it is. So legend, we're going to do, uh, we'll just do it on the right, make it look a little bit better. Um, then we're going to pick one of these bars. So make sure you click both in the series are selected and we can do these for solid fill or we'll do actually no fill and we'll do, why is this? Okay, we'll do no fill and then the border will do a solid line and make sure it's black. So we have open and then we'll do for the other series solid line and we'll do a solid fill but make sure that it's black and so now we have that uh, so what we need to add is we need to add um, some labels here so we're going to add access labels so we go to access titles again they're not black so we're just mean number correct there we go and then of course we want this to be black. So we're gonna go to home and that. And then down here, this is the uh, test format. And put a label in there and it's gray again. So we're gonna make it black. These are gray, so we'll make those black. And then we're gonna, we have no label for our legend over here. So we can just do insert 
text and we will get a little text box and you can play around with the fonts and stuff but we can do class type and we can add that and move that around to position it so there you have it once you select all of that you've got your publication quality graph you can just copy it paste it into a word document and you're done hope you find this helpful thanks for watching